Okay, uh, so that was it. Okay, before I review my model answers, right, uh, I would like you guys to take a stab at it. So, uh, can someone tell me what is simple about Bang Bang? Based on what I said earlier. Oh, we don't have sweets or special prizes to give out, right? <laughs> okay, never mind. Uh, huh, how are? Uh? Okay, go for it. Arrangement. arrangement. Yeah, so what is simple about the arrangement? Yes, if you, uh, so what Eddie said is the, the instrumental is very, or rather the whole thing is very vocally driven. There are very few instruments in it, and when the instruments come in, they come in once, and then they stay out for a bit, and they come in again. It is not constant. The only thing that's constant is the... Vocals and drums, right. So this entire song is vocals and drums, and occasionally the bass will come in, and occasionally you'll hear some brass things, and that's about it. So that's all you need to do. You don't have to fill your song with lots of crap. Uh, let's talk about the melody. What is simple about the melody? Yes. And within those three different parts, do you notice that the, the parts are simply made up of maybe two bars repeated over and over again? Yeah, so there are three distinct parts, and even within those parts, you have four or five repetitions with, within every part. So that is the key to a hit. Just repeat and make everything really, really simple. Uh, let's talk about strength. So what do you find to be strong about the ideas in this song? Someone? <sighs> Singapore audiences. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes, the chorus hook is very strong. Why is it strong? Because it is a very simple word. It's bang bang, which is also uh, it's also a euphemism for you know what. Uh, so that, and that's what makes it strong. It's a simple word that a five-year-old kid can understand, but if you're an adult, you'll get a, another layer of meaning, obviously. Okay, so the, the hook itself is, uh, is strong because of that. Also, the word bang, you know, like there are certain words that are very attention-grabbing. If you think about, uh, you know, if it was Ariana Grande or Jessie J, My Little Pony, versus Jessie J, Bang Bang, what looks better? Obviously, this looks better. Okay. Not to say that there's anything wrong with My Little Pony, but uh, so there are certain words that stick out and Bang Bang is definitely a really good choice of title as well as the hook. Uh, what else is strong about this? What's strong about the melody? Yes, the melody is very catchy and by the second or third time you hear it, you will know what it is. Also because they stole it from Wham. If any of you are in the room are old enough to know the song Wake Me Up Before You Go Go, the melody was ripped completely from that song. Uh, okay, so let's talk about that, that contrast. Contrast. What is contrasting about the way this song is presented within the song? Were there any interesting surprises inside the song? Yeah, the rap was cool. It was very contrasting. What happened after the rap, though, is what I find to be the highlight of the song, where the music stops and Jessie J wails for three measures. When normally you expect after a rap, you'll go right back into the chorus. But in this case, she gives, uh, the producer, Max, gives Jessie J her very unexpected vocal moment, and then it goes back into the chorus. So that is a very nice contrast point in this song as well. Okay, let's talk about context. Context. So, who do you think uh, the girls are targeting this song towards? Boys. Boys. Uh, maybe. Uh, so, some people think boys and some people think girls. I think it's a mixture of both. I think the visual of this is very calculated to appeal to guys because we are very simple people. Uh, <laughs> very easy to please. But the, the lyrics and the melody and all of it is targeted towards girls. Uh, so they are on a very superficial level, they try to appeal to empowered girls. You know, like, yeah, we are empowered, we can flaunt our sexuality and you know, it's all great and we are very confident. So on that level, the lyrics work because of that. Okay, let's go through the model answers. 
Okay, like I said, melody, tons of repetition and sequence. Lyrics, very basic words. Nothing a primary schooler would not understand. But you need to be a bit more grown up to understand the exact meaning, obviously. Okay, in the arrangement, a ton of space. Basically, drums, claps, and a little bit of brass and bass. That's it. Next. Okay, hook is very catchy and sing along. The lyrics are very clear. There's a singular concept, which is that the girls are hot and they're about to blow your mind, so let's go and bang, bang. Okay, uh, the arrangement is very drums based, but it works, you know? The drums are really strong and they make you want to dance along. And there are those little like chromatic licks in the guitars and bass that are quite catchy too, you know? That, da -da 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 -da. that stuff is cool too. Next. Okay, let's talk about the, the, the slightly more technical stuff. You know, the melody is high. The, sorry, the verse is high uh, when Ariana and Jesse sing it. And then you have a low ascending chorus, bang, bang, into the room, yeah? And then, if you think about the, where it lands on the beat too, uh, for, for the musicians in the room, uh, you have an off-beat verse and an on-beat chorus. Yeah, so, the, so the, basically the chorus is very straight. It's bang, bang, into the room. Whereas uh, the verse is like, da -da 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 -da, which is a little bit more syncopated, more off the beat. Okay? Uh, if you look at the arrangement, like I said, it's very sparse. And so there is very, actually, if you think about it, there's very little room for contrast because there's so little going on in the first place. But there's still some points of contrast. Like I said, the surprise at the end of the bridge is a highlight for me. At the same time, there is a brass that only shows up in the chorus. And if you listen to the drums, even though it's continuous, there's more claps dominant in the verse and more big drums dominant in the chorus. Next. Okay, context. So you look at the demographic of this song. We talked about that. So I think it's young top 40 listeners from teens to early 30s. Both guys and girls. Appeal is for different reasons, obviously, but you know, so the idea is that you know it's a party song, have fun, feel good. Those are the dominant emotions. Uh, so if you look at the genre, it's also something that's very hot right now. It's not groundbreaking, but it's like it's just an 80s throwback kind of genre, which fits in top 40 right now. Which is important because radio does not play anything that is outside of its prescribed genres for the period. Unless you are for a special situation. Okay. The lyrics are very easy. I mean, they are not the most groundbreaking thing in the world. They're easy to digest, they're a little flirty, but still clean enough to be played on radio. Performance-wise, you will realize each star gets to appeal to their, their respective fan bases. I mean, Jesse and Ariana get to belt, Nikki gets to um, rap, like really rapidly, and all of them get to dance around wearing very little. So, <laughs> yeah, so any questions? So that's why I think Bang Bang is a hit. And if you go back and you go to the top 10 and you analyze every single song in this way, you'll quickly begin to understand why certain songs are hits and certain songs aren't. It is really this simple. Okay, so uh, in my last uh, few minutes before I hand over to Roland, I will do some tips. So the morning after recall trick. Um, I write a lot of songs in LA. I write about maybe five songs a week, every single week, five to six songs. and uh, it's hard after a while because then I'm just in machine mode and I don't know whether a song is good or not anymore. So the idea is, you know, I'll write a song and then it'll be great because we're like, wow, we wrote a hit. And I'll go to bed and I'll wake up the next morning and I'll think, hey, is it really a hit? It's only a hit if I can remember all the melodies and all the lyrics, or most of them, in my head. And I can just sing the whole thing through, recall it without much effort. If I don't, or if I stumble on certain parts that are problematic, I know that I need to go back and rework those, session, those sections to make them stronger. Okay, copying is also a great way to start. I remember when I first started out, I was imitating a lot of melodies, imitating a lot of, um, especially production elements. Uh, in, in fact, I even went all out to uh, you know, listen to a song maybe 500 times and steal try to replicate the drums as exactly as I can, you know, the, the vocal arrangements as exactly as I can, and as I could. And then after I did that, I realized what made them tick. So this is something that you can do at home, which is a very easy exercise. It's very time consuming, but you will get it after a while quite naturally. Like as the closer you get to imitating your favorite songs. 
The, th the third tip I have, which is the arrangement tip, is use the right sounds. A lot of times I get sent demos that are very uh, substandard, and it's not because the musical ideas aren't good. It's because for some reason, you know, the kinds of sounds that were being used were very cheesy, you know, just not very good. So I think tip two and tip three work together. First, you figure out what is the sound on the radio that you like. And then you figure out, okay, this piano sounds like that. So let's go online and do some research and find a piano that sounds exactly like that. And so on and so forth. Once you can do that for all the elements and find your favorite sounds that sound good, and not just because it's a piano, you know, not all pianos are made equal. So do s put in some time to find the sounds that you like and that sound com uh, comparable to whatever's out there on the radio. Okay? And the last tip I have is uh, don't imitate exactly. I know this runs contrary to the second rule, but let me explain. Don't imitate exactly when it comes, out time, when it comes time to, re to release your own stuff. Because remember that when, when you're making stuff, there is a time lag between that and you releasing it. And by that time, we would have progressed. The good news is, though, that progress on radio is evolutionary. It's very incremental, meaning you won't find something on the radio overnight that sounds completely different from everything else. Most of the time, it's a slow process of evolution where we slowly morph into a different style or a different trend. So what you can do is dissect your top 20, figure out what works lyrically, melodically, arrangement-wise, and then figure out a way to make it your own, meaning add your own layer on top of it, your special sauce, so as to, uh, so, so as to speak. So that you come up with something that A is commercial sounding, but B is still your own because you've taken the time to add your special layer on top of it, whatever that special layer is. Okay, any, any uh, quick questions before I move on to Roland? One question, one question, yeah. Complete demos. Complete demos, yeah. 